Hi guys, in this video we are going to learn what's meant by the approximation and what are the methods we are going to follow to approximate a certain decimal number. So first of all we need to understand why we need approximation. Let's for an example let's take about a calculator. So when you are doing a sum in calculation calculator what the calculator will do is it will only store a certain number let's say you are going to type a fraction of 4 by 3 actually we knew that the number the decimal value would be 1.33 and it's going to continue 1.3333 for infinite number but the calculator cannot store that infinite number inside the storage it's having actually we knew it's going to be some less bits so what the calculator will do is they are going to approximate the number so let's say it's going to approximate the number for four digits so what we can write is 1.33 normally we knew that we are going to see the fifth digit and we are going to cut off for that fourth digit so here the fifth digit would be three if that fifth digit is less than five we are going to cut down this one and we are going to leave other four so it's going to be 1.333 so the calculator will store only this number 1.333 so that's the main part that's why we are learning about the approximation not only the calculator any digital device or electronic device is going to use this method since they can't hold they can't store that number fully if the infinite if they are having infinite decimal numbers otherwise if i if they are having more than that capacity they can't store so they are going to approximate and after that they are going to store actually we knew that if they approximate we are going to get anyway we are going to get an error but the thing is the error we are going to calculate using relative error and absolute error which we will be learning in the next few videos however the thing is even we make the approximation we need to make sure that relative error or the absolute error is very less so however we are going to make an error if they, if we approximate uh, something however we are going to make sure that relative error is less okay so over here what are the two methods of approximation before that we need to learn something new a normalized form so what's mean by the normalized form is actually we knew that scientific form most probably you have already heard that let's say this is 13.33 there is a number called 13.33 so in scientific method what we will do is we will take this decimal before one point so here we are going to take like this 1.333 we are taking that decimal one point in front so the concept is before this decimal there is only one digit so likewise we need to change that decimal point after that what we are going to do is if we multiply by the tenth first power we are going to get this value so this is known as scientific form first we are going to take the decimal like only one digit before that decimal point and after that we need to multiply by tens power so for an example let's say here 134 let's say 1345 and after that there are two number two seven so please stop the video pause the video and try to figure it out what's the scientific form of this number most probably you already done it i hope it's very simple 1.34527 so what we have done is only one digit before that decimal point so over here one two three so we are going to multiply by three so if we multiply by three that's about three we are going to get this number so this is known as scientific form likewise here we are going to learn something new normalized form however why we are having these types of form is to make some process simpler in some specific part so here we are going to learn about normalized form so what's mean by the normalized decimal form is 
in scientific form what we will do is we will check on whether there is only one digit before the decimal point in here in normalized form we will make sure that all the decimal points are after the sorry all the digits are after that decimal point so over here what we need to do is we need to put the zero first and decimal point and one three 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 so here we need to make sure the decimal point is in front of all the other digits in two it's going to be 10 to the power two likewise if i take this part two seven when we are using this in normalized form we are going to do like this 0 0.134527 into 10 to the power 4. So this is known as normalized floating point form. So here it's going to be floating which means there are decimal numbers. So we are going to use like normalized floating form, point form. So another important thing is when we are considering about this d1 let's say we can actually write this in this format d1 d2 the decimal numbers and up to dk dk plus 1 into dn into 10 to the power something so we can write it like this n so let's make this is n so here 10 to the power n so it's very simple we are going to have like this and we are going to multiply it by 10 to the power something 10 to the power here so this is the general form of normalized floating point form so the condition for that is the d1 should be greater than or equals to 1 and less than or equals to 9 which means d1 cannot take the value of 0 actually we knew that otherwise it's not going to have the sense so we can't write it like this 0 0.01333 and the power 3. The reason is this D1 cannot be taking the value of 0. After that other values D2 or DK or DN, they can choose the value from 0 to 9. So there is no, there is no problem. But however, D1 cannot be take that, taken that value. So the next part is, Actually, we are going to learn the approximation using this normalized form. That's why we learned in this part. So after that, the, what are the methods available for the approximation is first one is chopping. So the second one is rounding. So when we are considering about the chopping, what we are going to do is let's say I'm going to write this in the decimal point form, normalized decimal point form let's say this up to dk into 10 to the power n likewise the number we are having over here is dk into 10 to the power n so what we are going to do when we are chopping is let's say i'm going to chop up to three decimal points so three digits so another important thing is when we uh, when you hear about the digit number let's say this is three digits of a number you need to change this for the actual number for the normalized form and after that only you need to count that this is the first digit and second third so first you need to change for normalized form whether they ask or not you need to change you must change for normalized form after that you need to count the three digits so here we are going to do the chopping part for three digits so what's mean by the chopping part is if they ask of three digits you are going, going to cut off the total number from this three part after that third digital part the digital digit part so here we are going to cut off this part so what the final value we are going to get is 0 0.d1 d2 d3 into 10 to the power n so we have approximated likewise when you are considering about the rounding let's get rounded for three digits so first you need to change it for this normalized form and after that what's actually you already knew about the rounding part when you are rounding that up to three digits you need to check this fourth digit so if the fourth digit is great less than five we are going to put the number as same d1 d2 d3 into 10 to the power n if this d4 digit the fourth digit in that decimal number 
is greater than or equals to 5, we are going to do 0 0.d1, d2. From For this d3, what we are going to do is we are going to add one number d3 plus 1 into 10 to the power n. So if we, we are going to check the fourth digit and after that we are going to round it off according to that digit. So for an example, it would be very, I hope you understood this. And also you need to, uh, let's have some examples so we can understand that clearly. So here, there's a number 13.38. So this is the number. First, we are going to round it off for two digit or two digit rounding. And the next question is two digit chopping. So what you are going to do is please pause the video and try it in your own. I hope you have uh, gave it a try. So here, when we are trying about the two digit rounding, first of all, I have already mentioned, we need to use the normalized form. So I'm going to change it this for normalized form, 0 0.1338 into the power 10 to the power two into 10 to the power two. After that, we are going to take the two digit rounding. So we are going to cut off by two here. This is first digit and this is going to be the second digit. So, so after that, when you are considering about the rounding, actually we need to check the third part, three. So actually we knew that three is less than five. So what we can do is we can directly do the chopping part. So 0 0.13 into 10 to the power square. In square. Likewise, so here two digit chopping. So if the decimal part, this part is greater than or equals to five, when we are doing the rounding, it's going to be 0 0.14. However, this is less than five. The third digit is less than five. So we are going to get like what the answer we are going to get like for chopping. So if you do the chopping part, you don't need to consider the any three digits or fourth digit. What we are going to do is we are going to cut off after the second part. So it's going to be 0 0.13 to the power square. So here, if you simplify this, you are going to get 13 and 13. Actually, you need to understand when we are input a value like this, 13.38, the computer device or the storage device which can store or which can which is using two digit shopping for store its value or approximate its value, it's going to store like this. If a calculator use this two digit rounding method to approximate its value, it's going to change, store the value 13.38 like this. So however, there is going to be error when we are doing the calculation, but the thing is it can store up to eight or nine digits. So it's going to be very bits, the digits are very higher in calculator, not two or three. However, it's going to approximate. So we are going to get some errors. So in the next video, we are going to learn what are the types of error and how to minimize those errors in the next video i hope uh, if you have uh, any doubts please comment it below and i hope you have subscribed expected thank you for watching